a student adds a series of masses to a vertical metal wire of circular cross-section and measures the extension of the wire produced. Figure 1 is a force extension graph, so force against extension. 2.1 is to mark on figure 1, point P, the limit beyond which Hooke's law is no longer obeyed. So that would be when this curve is no longer a straight line, which would be over here. This is the point up until which force is proportional to extension. That's the limit of proportionality. That's the point up until which Hooke's law is obeyed. Outline how the student can use these results and other measurements to determine the Young modulus of the wire. So Young modulus, stress over strain, force over cross-sectional area over extension over original length, which is FL over XA. So we already have, in the question, a graph of force against extension. So we have a graph of force against extension. If we work out the gradient of the linear portion of that graph, we get f over x. We then need to get the length and the cross-sectional area. We can directly measure the length. The cross-sectional area, we need to first measure the diameter, divide that diameter by 2 to get the radius, and then we do pi r squared to get the area. When the wire has been extended to point A, the masses are removed one by one and the extension remeasured. Draw on figure one the shape of the graph the student will obtain. So we're extending the graph to point A. Point A is at the end as we see here. We're then removing the masses until they're all removed and drawing the new graph. So we would get a straight line back down to zero force, so back down to the extension line, which is parallel to the initial line that we have here. Explain why the gradient has the shape you have drawn. So let's consider a stress-strain curve. So we have elastic deformation followed by some plastic deformation. When the object undergoes elastic deformation, the gradient of the stress-strain curve, so this portion here, is the Young modulus. It then undergoes some plastic deformation over here, and then it returns back to its new, slightly longer natural length. It's undergoing elastic relaxation in this portion of the graph here. The permanent deformation has already occurred. It's elastic relaxation that brings it back to this new length. The material is the same, and therefore the bonds between atoms have not changed. The atoms have just been rearranged, and therefore the Young modulus is also unchanged. Young modulus is a material property. It doesn't depend on the dimensions of the object. It's the same material, so it has the same Young modulus. When we have elastic deformation for this linear portion of the graph here, the gradient is the Young modulus. So when we have elastic relaxation for this portion of the graph, it's the same material, so the gradient should also be the Young modulus. But we have a force extension graph, so it's a little bit different. Here, the gradient represents stiffness, and that depends on both the material as well as the dimensions of that object. So the only way that the gradient is the same as before is if the thickness of the material hasn't significantly changed. If the wire is significantly thinner, it would be easier to stretch and relax, and therefore the gradient would be lower. Like if you have a rubber band, a thinner rubber band will stretch more easily. But we're not assuming that here, although the question doesn't explicitly state it. So if the cross-sectional area hasn't significantly changed, the gradient of this graph also just depends on the material, and that is unchanged. So to summarize what you need to say to get the marks, I know I went into a lot of detail, but I don't think the mark scheme makes much sense otherwise. The material undergoes permanent extension, as the atoms have rearranged, but the material is the same. The forces between the atoms are the same. And if the thickness of the wire hasn't significantly changed, the gradient of this force extension graph should also be unchanged. So the material undergoes permanent extension as the atoms have rearranged. 
but the material is the same, so we have the same forces between atoms. If the thickness of the wire hasn't significantly changed, the gradient should be the same. The metal wire is used to make a cable of diameter of 6 millimeters. The Young modulus of the metal cable is 2 times 10 to the 11. Calculate the force necessary to produce a strain of 0.2% in the cable. So we want to work out force. We have the Young modulus, we have the diameter, we have the strain. Young modulus is equal to stress, force over cross-sectional area, over strain. So then rearranging this for force, we get force is equal to E epsilon A. The strain, we want to convert to decimal form, so divide by 100, we get 0 0.002. And the diameter, we want to convert to meters, so that'll be 0 0.006. Cross-sectional area is pi d over 2 squared. So put all of this in, Young modulus, stress, diameter, into this equation, and we get 11310. So 11.3 kilonewtons. The cable is used in a crane to lift a mass of 600 kilograms. Determine the maximum acceleration with which the mass can be lifted if the strain in the cable is not to exceed 0.2%. Okay, so F is equal to MA. We're trying to work out acceleration. Let's consider a force diagram. We have the tension going upwards and then we have the weight going downwards of 600 g. The acceleration will be upwards as the mass is being lifted. So then the equation would be T minus 600 g. That would be our resultant force F, the resultant upwards force. That's equal to MA 600 times A. So acceleration is then equal to T minus 600 g all over 600, rearranging the equation that we have here. And the tension force, it says in the question that the strain should not exceed 0.2%. The tension will therefore be this force that we worked out here, 11,310. That was the force when the strain is 0.2%. It's the same cable. So T is 11,310. Put that into our equation, and we end up with A being equal to 9.04, so 9 meters per second squared. An engineer redesigns the crane to lift a 1200 kilogram load at the same maximum acceleration. Discuss the changes that could be made to the cable of the crane to achieve this without exceeding the 0.2% strain. Okay, so let's first of all think about how doubling the mass affects the force. So tension upwards, let's just say the weight is mg, acceleration is again upwards. So that means that T minus mg is equal to ma as before, t is then equal to mg plus ma, t is then equal to m multiplied by g plus a. So we can see from this equation that we have here that tension is proportional to mass. So if the mass were to double, the tension will double too. So mass doubles, therefore tension doubles as well as T is proportional to M. Okay, so if the tension doubles, how do we need to modify the cable to not exceed that 0.2% strain? So Young modulus, stress, over strain. The strain is constant. We're not going to be exceeding that 0.2%. So that means that Young modulus is proportional to F over A and therefore F force or tension is proportional to EA. So our force doubles, we can achieve that if the Young modulus were to double, so if we used a material which has twice the Young modulus, or if we were to double the cross-sectional area, each of those things individually will double the maximum force that the wire can experience. So double Young modulus, double cross-sectional area, or double the product of the Young Modulus and cross-sectional area. 